All right, Stan, so what do we have here? Okay, we got two broom handle Mausers, uh, the 1896 model. The bottom one here is your commercial, typical broom handle Mauser that were made as late as the end of the war. People would buy them as individuals. Uh, Winston Churchill carrying one at uh, Omdurman, okay? Uh, they were considered a good combat weapon. Uh, like I said, uh, Winston Churchill carried one when he was uh, in, in the Boer War, but he got caught, and as a matter of fact, the story is he had a stripper clip of soft point ammunition that he decided he better get rid of real fast because they weren't too kind on people using dumb, dumb bullets. Yeah. Above it is the one that the German government actually purchased for its soldiers. And it's the same gun except in 9mm, and we call them the Red 9. Yeah, the Red 9, the C96 Red right. 9. Right. Now, yeah. the trick is the sights only go up to 500 meters. Let me do that for you. Okay? As compared to the 1,000 meters on the 30 caliber model. And collectors have to be careful because what happened is the Chinese loved broom handles and a lot of them came into this country and dealers would re-barrel, they were pitted. They would re-chamber them for 9mm, put 9 grips on them, and sell them as red 9s. And the only way you could tell they weren't is by looking at the rear sight. Okay. Because they still had the original 1000, which is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. So still yeah, so basically look at the rear sight yes. to check if it's a, uh, if it's a Chinese original, knockoff. Yeah. Yeah. A, a Chinese rebuild. And they, the Chinese didn't rebuild them. They were rebuilt by some gun dealer in Long Island. And they're re-blued, and they're mismatched parts, and they're shooters, which is fine, you know. Mm -hmm. But if, from the collector point of view, no, you don't want one. As we move over, we have the famous Luger, okay? Now, this particular Luger is the artillery model, which the Allies found, for some reason, extremely dangerous, and, and they banned the manufacture of them after the war, okay? Uh, the long barrel somehow made it an evil gun. Gun, and needless to say, they are a prime collector piece because everybody wants the evil gun, the long barrel Luger. And, you know, you had it with a shoulder stock. And it was also the home of the first high-capacity pistol magazine. Uh, there was a special 32-round magazine that went with this gun. Really? 32-round magazine? Uh, <laughs> You know, for those people who want to ban high-capacity magazines thinking it was some evil invention that came out during the drug wars, it actually came out in 1915 or so. Uh, the Germans made a, it's a complicated design, you got to put the rounds in through a special loader and it sticks out of the bottom, it's a drum. And if you have the shoulder stock and the 32 round magazine, uh, that would be a carbine. That's yeah, you got a, a carbine. You, got a, you got a pistol caliber carbine, okay? I was about to say, there was in there, like there was a stock, yeah. a shoulder stock for it. There, I have one, but it's a reproduction stock and it doesn't really fit right. Mm. Uh, if you can find one of these guns with the original holster, and stock and 32 round magazine and loading tool and everything. Yeah. You're probably going to pay about three thousand dollars. And uh, I said, um, the which one? The, the artillery Luger is a DWM, which means Deutsche Waffen and Munitions Fabriken. It was made in 1917. They're not in the mud. Yeah. They're, that's why they issued them in a big leather holster. And that's why the Germans went to the P-38 in the Second World War. And, um, and the other Luger, I'll have to look on the chamber. See, you can see something here. Maybe you can hear the markings on if you can make it out. Okay, there should be DWM on the over here on the toggles. DWM and very it's a script and it sort of wiggles in there. And that's Deutsche Waffen und Munitions Fabriken. Alright, this was made in 1917. There we go. You got it? Okay. How's the clip go in there? I assume that's from the top. Stripper clip. There's no magazine, it's loose rounds. Or a stripper clip. Okay. Alright. Now the Luger here, this one here, is Deutsche Waffen and Munitions also, I guess. Alright, somebody else here has an Erfurt. And this is 1915, early part of the war. There's a minor change in the safety later on. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the same gun. Just a minor change in, in how the safety uh, locks the toggle when it's on safe. Okay. All right.
Now, over here, we have three examples of the 1911. All right. Which one, which one is uh, the rarest? Yeah. Okay. That would be the one right here. If you get real close, that's what makes it rare. In the first couple of years, some of the guns were made for the Navy and marked U.S. Navy. U.S. Navy, yeah. Okay? Then later, now, you're going to see people who are going to claim that they got ones that are marked USMC. I have one of those. They're fake. <laughs> The Marines didn't Yeah, no. The Marines got issued yeah. Navy guns and Army guns. Army guns. After a while, all the guns were marked U.S. Army. Okay? Or so U.S. property. Yeah, U.S. property, U.S. Army. All right. Now, this one here is a Remington. Is this a Singer? Let's see, which one is here? The Singer model? No, no. Uh, this one here. I'm trying to think of the markings on it. Springfield Armory. Springfield. Okay. Yeah, the Springfield Armory also made uh, 45 automatics before the war. Okay? So that one there says Springfield Armory. This is Remington? Yeah. Now, one of the guns that were made in quantity were... were the top the, one. Right here. Yeah. yeah top the Remington UMC. UMC. The thing is, most of them never got overseas. All right, they were made for the war. Got to remember, the Allies were thinking of the big offensive in 1919 would end the war. Uh, when the war ended in November, they were still preparing for the big offensive of 1919. So these pistols were made, you know, in the fall of 1918, we were still producing guns that we didn't have to anymore. Yeah. The war's over. Question. Yeah. What year were the singers made? Singers? I think it's 1940, 41, that era. Right before. Yeah, I think before Pearl Harbor. I believe before Pearl Harbor. I had to slide from one. That's the closest I'll ever get to one. I was telling him, he told me he had to slide. Yeah, I got to slide. And the guy who was stuck off, I had the receiver. Uh, now, this Colt here in U.S. Navy, it's pretty, most of the finish is still pretty original for a gun that's over 100 years old. But that's, they are in great demand, the ones that are U.S. Navy. Uh, they can be documented with letters from, I checked the serial number range. That's a, some people say, well, what if you get the slide? Well, if you can find the, the slides are pretty rare, too. And in the beginning, if they were made for the Navy, they were marked for the Navy. If they were made for the Army, they were marked for the Army. And they were never marked for the Marine Corps. And then okay. later on, there was a U.S. property. Now, I have a old no. three. Yep. This marked the United States Marine Corps. Something, you know, a, an armorer might have marked it himself. Yeah. Like, you know. It has in the barrel. Yeah. It has, uh, uh, what is it, 10, 1042? Oh, the Sedgley barrel for yeah. a Springfield rifle. Right. Yeah, I've got those. Those were barrels made for the Marine Corps. USA, for the Marine Corps. USMC. Yeah. For repair. Okay, if you want this data cards I put on these things, that maybe give you some more information if you, you know. You, uh, you wouldn't be selling that one of these days. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I told you the story behind that. Yeah, no. Well, if you ever do it, let me know. Yeah. Please. Now, or maybe we can trade. You yeah. never know. Now, over here, is a Colt revolver that was rebuilt. Let's see if I can find the markings. Let me see. I'm going to probably have to reverse it. Yeah, here it is. You got to get the markings right there. L-E-B. All right. Uh, General Pershing liked this gun. 38 Colt, right? Yeah. And he wanted him for the general staff, and he wanted him for some other people. And the guns were, some of them were in pretty bad shape. So they went to Colt and said, what will it take to refurbish all these? And they go, we don't have the time for that crap. <laughs> Mm. We're making 1917 revolvers, we're making 19... Oh, yeah. So Remington put in a bid, and the Remington Union Metallic Corporation got the bid to refurbish close to 20,000 of these pistols for use in the First World War. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason you're going to find a lot of them in this great condition is, in 1918 they were refurbished. In 1922 the government declared them obsolete and sold them all off. The Rem it was R R R RAC is Ronaldo A. Carr. He was the original inspector when the gun was first made. LEB, it might be on the car. The information's here. Well, LEB here. Yeah, here's the information if you want, all the information. That tells you the history of the gun being referred and gives you the sources, the references, okay? There's, you know, if you go to those books, you can find out about these. Did you uh, read about that gun with uh, the Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah, had? oh yeah. How it was that, stolen it, and it fell in the bushes right. and it was found 20 years later or whatever and yeah. it was rusted in there. Then it was stolen again and they recovered it. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting pistol. 
I had that for years as my shooter, and I, tre and I treated it and abused it because it was my shooter. Thank you. I found out later, when, they, when the book came out on the cult, that certain ones, I'll flip it over, have this symbol, well, I guess the symbol was there, let's see, wait. Yeah, the symbol, it's an A in a diamond, and the serial number range, those were guns that were made for the Belgians. Now, Belgian, Colton Browning had an, uh, Fabrique Nationale had an agreement. Right. Colt would sell its guns in, in the Americas and would not compete in Britain. You can go over there. Belgium would have the British market. Mm -hmm. But when the when World War I occurred, the Fabrique Nationale factory ended up on the German side of the right. new border. So, okay? uh, all bets are off. So they contracted with Colt to make them pistols for their army. And this beat up gun that I didn't realize until I got the book, the serial number and the markings indicate this was made for the Belgians. Oh, wow. Okay. 32, right? 32. 32. They didn't change the count. They took guns off the line, I guess. And that particular pistol um, was, uh, like I said, it's a, now I've seen pictures of these guns with black paint on them, which the Belgians in the 1930s like rebuilt them and they painted them black. Now I'm always wondering if this had black paint and the previous owner scrubbed it off, scrubbed it off not realizing that he was taking away some of the gun's history. Yeah. Okay? Because you look back here, that's not really bluing. No. I think that's black paint. Or black enamel paint or whatever. So somebody probably thought, I'd make it look nicer, I'll get rid of the paint. And, you know, I, I ended up being the owner. And, uh, like I said, if you have an interest in uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk. Now, over here... I'm sure you got... I got something you like. I'm sure we can work. Over here, you'll see two American-made pistols in the 455 caliber. The top one is a Smith & Wesson. They call the second model. What happened was, Britain needed guns, and they contracted to get the second... Uh, to get the first model, which was... It's called the triple lock. It had a lot of extra metal, weight, and expense, and difficult to make. And they said, we'll buy them the ones you got but start making it cheaper and simpler yeah make it for us yeah, make it for us mm -hmm. so they made this now this particular gun there's a letter from Smith and Wesson uh, it's a provenance letter this particular gun was sent to Canada okay this was made and sent to Canada and I got information here on Canadian um, Smith and Wessons the only thing with this gun is it was probably sold to an officer, I don't know who, and somebody had it re-blued. But they left it in the original caliber. A problem for collectors is a lot of these guns, when they were sent back to the U.S. for the collector market, they made them 45, they made them 45 ACP or 45 long Colt. Now, I have seen one of these that's in 45 long Colt. It will still chamber 455. Okay? Because of the cylinder. Yeah. This one here, you can't stick a 45 Colt in it. It's, it's, it's 455, it hasn't changed. Because people wanted to shoot their revolvers. Below it is a Colt new service. Now, what Rich went into in his presentation, when the war broke out, Colt said, we'll make you more 1909 revolvers in 45 Colt. We, you know, the factory's all set up for them. We got the stuff. And they said, no, we don't want to add that cartridge to the, to the logistics trail. We want a 45 ACP. <laughs> Can you make the gun in 45 ACP? And Colt engineers said yes. And they used the half moon clip. Here's the problem. We had a guy in our club who had one of these. And he had the early model. If you don't have a half moon clip, the 45 round slides all the way through. Smith and Wesson put a, put a little ridge in there so it can't, and then Colt did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you get a Colt 1917, if it's an early model, you have to have half moon clips. The later models, no. Mm -hmm. The Smith and Wesson always had a shoulder yeah, in the chamber, and you can stick, uh, you know, individual cartridges and pull them out with your fingernails. I have the Smith & Wesson, but I have I use the rimless uh, case. The auto rim? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You've got the auto rim ammunition. I, I love them. I reload right. them. Because you can't um, find them. I haven't, I haven't yeah. found anywhere, but I, I bought them and I I don't have it here because there was a miscommunication. I would have had a Webley revolver. Yeah, I'm saying 45 is... Webleys that are shaved for 45 ACP are not that safe. Collectors don't like them because 
far as they're concerned, it's ruined. But if you're a shooter and you have a Webley that's been shaved for 45 ACP, you better load your own downloaded ammunition. Real, real light load. Yeah. But there's a Webley here. Yeah. Is that one Yeah. Okay. Remember, it's really designed for this big 45. So it's a big case. Yeah, that's a 45 or a 455. I think the total of these guns really are made to take. The Navy one will probably go for two and a half thousand. The Remington UMC for at least two. Uh, the Springfield. This guy here. Yeah, you know what? These, these, yeah, these are kind of expensive. Now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, they, they, the Navy would be fifteen. No, Navy was fifteen twenty years ago. No, it's smaller than that now. Yeah. Probably so, now. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're saying two and a half thousand. No, two thousand five hundred. Yeah, I'm saying it's fifteen thousand. Oh no, I don't think that. Much. I'm telling you. Okay. I follow this shit. I'll you, take your word for you it. You can't. <laughs> You can't get the stuff. I, well, finding them is difficult. I have another Navy, but it's parkerized. They got rebuilt for World War II. Okay. The serial number range is questionable. But it's got a Navy slide. Well, but, okay, yeah. so this, in the market, which one is which one is more expensive? This is the most he expensive. Claims the Navy one is. Okay. Okay. Of course. This one's also very expensive. And the, the, both the Remington and that one. Yeah, Remington, okay. Remington and Springfield. These are eight or ten thousand dollars. Have you seen the prices? I haven't. I, there's, you know some, there's so many new guys in the game yeah. that it's it's through the roof. And, and it's it's, yeah, it's, it's World War One. Yeah. yeah, through the roof. As I used to tell people, I can't afford to buy my own collection. No, these guys no, 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 are well, through I, the I, roof. I, I spent years collecting my yeah. stuff. And, what are you kidding well, me? Forty fives have been displaced with the, the, the seventy three revolver. If you yeah. have. If you have uh, a Colt 45, right, Stan. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for the presentation. Okay, just Model, uh, a little extra stuff. You. What is it, Listen, 80? when you uh, go through Riches, there's one type. Yeah, 80? He's got Luger. I don't know. You got 763. Go. 762. It's 30 Luger and 9 millimeter Luger. Right. There's no 763 Luger. When I bought, okay. and I bought my, it's a minor mistake he made on, 20 years on a slide. You know, one in stainless steel, one in blue. We all make mistakes. Six, seven hundred dollars for the only human. You can't even get him, and if you get him, it's going to cost you at least two grand.